Uh, good morning. Uh, we are, my name is Bilal and this is Daniel. We're from Barking and Dagenham College. And we took part in the IVF research programme. Uh, we're both English and Maths coordinators at our college and we teach GCC Maths. Um, so. so, we decided to look at complete learning help with delivery of GCC Maths in further education. You know, for us, we've looked at it's going to become a big part of the college next year and what can we do to improve it? Uh, so, a bit of background, I'm sure many of you know already, but from this academic year, this coming academic year, 2015 to 2016, uh, government are now making it that anyone who arrives in further education with a GCSE D in English or Maths will automatically have to sit a GCSE um, in English or Maths. And they want from 2017 for GCSE will become the national standard of qualifications. And they're calling functional skills, which our college previously uh, delivered on the whole as a stepping stone qualification. Um, in terms of a little bit more background, in terms of the statistics, from 2012-2013, uh, the Department for Education report showed that out of those resitting their GCC maths and English, only 7% got the A far to C floor target in maths, and for English it was 6.5%. Um, so that led us to our problem. We're faced with a, with a very dynamic, very real problem that we have got to have lots of learners coming to us who have had, as uh, the previous presenter mentioned, the, these negative experiences and these horrible feelings of maths and coming to a further education almost feeling like they're failures in maths and they're coming with, a, with not the required grade. How do we approach that? Okay, so we decided to take a group of BTEC Level 3 Extended Diploma Sports Learners to use as our project. The reason we picked these learners is because at the time they was disengaged from their maths class. Although they was attending their main vocation, of course, they wasn't interested in maths. So for us, it was a nice group to use. If we could re-engage them, we knew we were going to be on the right track. The learners were between the ages of 16 to 18, although there were two 19 plus learners within that group. We decided to use Philip Learning and send them videos before they come to the class. We wanted to see if this would grow their confidence into coming back into the classroom and to re-engage them. Um, so some of the things that really spoke to us, some of the studies that we spoke to us, John Hattie, 2009, he conducted a meta-analysis um, and one of the things that he found, one of the things that he surmised was that repeating any qualification or grade had no beneficial impact. So doing the same thing over again, it just doesn't, <coughs> doesn't achieve anything, doesn't help anything. That's one of the reasons we looked at flip learning and could we say flip learning, could that be a possible tool, could that be a possible tool to help these young learners um, experience maths in a different way, have perhaps a different delivery. Um, it was Diane Lorillard in 2008's address to the Institute of Education. She actually quote, and this quote really just summed everything up for us and really spoke to us. Uh, Technology works best when it has to meet a challenge, and worse when it's looking when it's a solution looking for a problem. So we thought technology could perhaps be, you know, our solution to this challenge. We don't want to throw technology at these learners and say, here is your videos, go away, and you know, pass the your exam. But we thought that it was a real dynamic problem that we could face. So what we did was over a period of six, six weeks, weeks, we took a, this group of VTEC Extended Diploma students and we sent them varying videos, varying in length, varying in style, varying in, we had some American videos, we had some English videos as well. Um, and we basically wanted to gauge feedback and attitudes towards their engagement with class. This was a class we previously had very low attendance in their maths classes, had very low motivation regarding maths, expressed very negative feelings towards maths at the beginning of the study. Um, what we found was... Key findings were that it was difficult and time consuming to find the videos and looking for one that is appropriate to what we think the learners will enjoy. So it was searching through, spending 10, 15 minutes looking through, saying, don't like that one, try this one, to make sure it's going to engage the learner when they're watching it. We did want to create a video. Um, that was the ultimate aim at the beginning. But when we was being realistic, it's too time consuming to create your own videos. But I and myself have still agreed it's something we do want to do moving forward, even if it's just one video. 
But when we were doing the project, we had to look at being realistic. We could have probably put a video together, but it was going above and beyond the time we would have in the normal day run of the college. Um, so we had to rely on what was out there for us to use. Would you, would you carry on? Um, some of the things that the students said, I think perhaps one of the things that spoke to us, keep you know, the headline out of this, I mean, we were stopped in the corridor. Well, my colleague Danielle was stopped in the corridor by a student previously hit the mask, we run away from the classes. Um, when's our next video coming? When's our next video coming along? And we were like, okay, that, now that in itself is pretty, pretty good. We were, we were very impressed. Um, we feel that they can work, and in our key findings, there are a few things that you know we can suggest for anyone who wants to try it, and things that we're going to continue to try in the next coming year. In terms of student voice, some one particular student said they came to class and they had a better understanding of what they were supposed to be doing. So, in terms of this, we had let me explain what we did. We did six weeks' lessons, we did seven flip learning videos, we then had a lesson surrounding the topic of that video. At the end of that lesson, we had a 20 minute focus forum with these learners where they could basically talk to us and talk to us how they felt. Um, so, one of the things one of the students said was they actually found out that they came into class and they felt they were very quick to see what was going on. They weren't ambushed almost in that sense. Um, Can I just add? I remember sitting there, we both were in the classroom on the first session. Bear in mind, these learners were most meant to be going to this class to go to maths and were not turning up for their tutor. Both looking at the clock. 10 minutes, then nobody showed. 15 minutes, I think the first two started strolling in. It was a relief because we now knew we had them through the door. So I'm just trying to prove they didn't come running straight away because we'd sold it to them as a research project. We did panic on the first session that we'd failed instantly because the learners were not showing. Then when they was in the class, we knew we had to catch them to get them to return. Um, there are some caveats with videos, so as you can expect, the 15 minute video about algebra unfortunately didn't quite hit their, hit their sensory senses, so the first thing we know, 15 minutes is perhaps too long. Um, the ideal length, what they told us, was three to five minutes for something that was short and sharp and something that would perhaps give the key, key findings or key basics of, of that particular topic. Um, they said the videos needed to be exciting, they didn't want to see a board with somebody talking at the board. I think one of the things about flipped learning that we found were plenty of videos with the teacher at the board. And we're like, would you teach in your class like that? But you're able to send a video like that. So they had the cartoon the videos that we could find it with a cartoon link. As childlike it was to us, they loved it. Um, one thing they also said was it gave them confidence, providing them a platform to be able to sort of engage in discourse with us. So it wasn't something that was as alien as what it seemed initially. Um, there were some, one or two learners who didn't particularly watch the video. One of the questions we were asked, we met with some colleagues before this, um, what would you do with someone who didn't watch the video, you know? And there was one particular student who didn't watch the video and they did have to then join. So it does have its drawbacks in terms of your lesson you have to be a bit more fluid to account for that particular learner. But I do think once that there is a minority of learners that are not watching the video and they see the engagement of the other learners participating straight away in the lesson, they are like, oh, maybe I should watch this next time because now they're all catching me up and the focus is on me rather than pulled away from me. And I do think that was highlighted within that. Um, for us, in terms of our recommendations, in terms of what we're going to do about this and dissemination strategy, um, we're going to carry this on next academic session. Um, what we're hoping to do is to do it over the course of the academic year with our actual GCC classes. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be implementing a series of key topics which we think we will set up videos for. One of the things that we found in that six weeks was the infrastructure as a tutor in further education, you know, our college has got a great digital learning team to be fair to them, but the time constraints and the efforts that we were placed under was, was we found it almost impossible to be able to set up a video ourselves. Um, that's one of the recommendations we've made to our organisation that we want to be able to perhaps have some infrastructure there to be able to support teachers if they want to be able to do something along like this line. And we do have a Moodle space, we are looking at developing that Moodle space and perhaps making it more friendly so that you can upload videos and film videos yourself. It's one of the things that we wanted to be able to do. Um, we want to be able to make sure, I think it's fair enough to say one of the things that we found is syllabus requirements 
in the GCC syllabus, GCC maths syllabus, and obviously teaching GCC maths or will teach GCC maths, has almost 80 criteria points. You know, we, we've got an enormous amount to cover, and we felt that perhaps this could be one way in terms of what we could do, what the flip could we do. And for us as well, at our college, we don't want to just engage the students, we want to engage other tutors to come on board with us, get the videos up and running, so it runs across the college. And that's a very fair point. There's only two of us, and there's <laughs> only so much the two of us can do. Perhaps we want to be able, that's the next part of our study. And two of us who are very engaged with technology and like embracing technology in the classroom. I think next year it'll be interesting to see uh, other teachers to see how their attitude towards technology does that impact this. So it's, it's a... Uh, this is the beginning for us, I think. We'll be continuing this along. We don't think it's going to answer all the problems, but we do think it's going to solve a small fraction of the problem of getting the learners engaged in the math. All right. Um, I think we've got a few minutes for questions. Any questions? If anyone's got any questions? Uh, sure. So the first week we started off with fractions. So we started off with a, a topic which we crossed between functional skills maths and GCC maths. Um, we then moved on to certain inequalities, um, and we then moved on to algebra, and that was a period of six weeks. Those were the three topics that we looked at. We wanted to start on an easy topic, so we didn't scare them from the beginning, in hope that they'd come back the next week. Um, and we're planning. What, what we're hoping to do for the next advent session is to identify 10 key topics and to be able to have them there. One of the things that we, have, we didn't mention was that the ability of the video is that it can pause, it can go back, and that takes and time. And if you then learn as well, we'd say, when did you watch the video? I'm not going to lie, we watched it on the bus on the way in. Perfect, you still watched it. So it gives them the flexibility of using their phone and watching it on the way in. Right, I've got two questions. Sure. One, did you use the Khan Academy at all? And if so, what was their reaction? And two, did you have apps that were using sort of apps as well? Uh, so the main videos that we sent were YouTube links. Yeah. So YouTube is a plethora of, of videos that you can use. We used them. There was one particular website which we can talk to you about if we want. We can, that had a video on its website, maybe on its website. We didn't use the Khan Academy in this particular research. But although I have used the Khan Academy and seen it, um, I'm not a particular fan of it in all honesty. It's a blackboard and someone talking over a blackboard. I think, you know, if that was going to work, it would have worked for them yeah. previously. I think it's about an early engagement. So again, it's back to that lower level, but technology is great if you, if, it, if you push it towards the right direction. If you just throw technology at a learner, it's the same as giving them a textbook. Or say, here, oh, I said, I'm sure you, you, know, you found that out yourself. Um, so that's one of the problems, and I guess Khan Academy is very American, so something like Pythagoras' theorem, they refer to the hypotenuse as the leg, so automatically, what is the leg? You know, you, you've got a whole terminology issue, um, but yeah. Do you see this as being something that actually could be student-led, so actually rather than you find the videos, because we've got something very similar sort of the GTSE revision page, where students would say, actually that's not very good, this is a better video. Yeah. And I think that because of the it takes all that time away from something which is obviously I mean, you know, kind of for us, us ideal world blue sky thinking, we wanted to be able to get students to be able to sort so create into yeah. some yeah. video yeah. to yeah. be able to do that. Yeah. Um, so maybe in revision at the end it'll be something that we're looking at ready for the following year. I mean I know this year we were both very big on getting the teachers uh, the students to leave the sessions amongst themselves. So here's your topic, go to each your table. So maybe this year it's something we're looking at we're the end of the year. year you know, say, so here's your topic, go and record it. Yeah. So that yeah, that, that was definitely we agree. I think it has to be student then the student focus. I mean if they yeah. participate they enjoy it more, others will watch it more because it is yeah. their peers delivering it to them. Save that it's not the issue of the magic of time, isn't it? Um, any other questions? Right.